What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down three things that faster wide receivers can do to consistently get separation and to get open, not just relying on their speed. So I hope this video helps you guys out. We're going to be looking at two clips here from Tyreek Hill, some of the best routes that he has ran, and then we're going to look at a clip from Jalen Waddle. So both teammates, both very fast, and two guys that you can learn a lot from. Now, also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to get some work in with us this offseason, we're coming out to six different locations for two-day-long quarterback and wide receiver training camp. So we're going to be coming out to Columbus, Ohio this weekend. That's our next stop. Then Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys are local to one of those states or would like to travel out for two whole days of training, four hours each day, eight hours total, and it's a small group environment. I don't know if you guys have seen clips from our camps, but we don't have the 150 showcase combines. It's more like a retreat. So if you guys want to come out, improve your skills, check out that very first link in the description below. Let's get started with this video. So now, first things first, you're going to see a lot of this coverage as a as a fast, kind of speedy, quick quick wide receiver. You're going to be seeing a lot of this outside leverage zone coverage where this DB is going to bail out of there, right? We know it's zone. He's looking at the quarterback. He's outside leverage. The whole reason he's outside leverage is he does not want to let this guy, who's the fastest player in the NFL, in your case, maybe you're the fastest player in your league, fastest player on your team, he does not want to let you beat him to the outside. His sole goal is he's got safety help to the inside. He wants to force you to his health because it's like a form of double teaming you, right? So what can you do to get separation on this? And that is going to be attacking the blind spot. So we're going to play this thing full speed. Now, this is a route called a squirrel route, right? So a squirrel route is an out, up, and then come back. It could be an out, and up, and out. So I would, I'll draw it on the screen. It's going to be an out, up, and then come back. Sometimes guys will run it like it's an out, up, and then back out again. But it's essentially a triple move route. Now, this is used in the right situation. This triple move would be used if it was like max protection, double tight ends, the quarterback's doing a deep play action fake. So we have some time to work this. But attacking the blind spot is something that I want to talk about here. Because anytime that a DB does not want to get beat over the top, you're going to see this coverage. He's bailing out of there. He's in zone. His eyes are on the quarterback. Maybe he's reading the number two wide receiver to see if anybody threatens his zone. So this is going to be an area we have to get comfortable with. If you're running a comeback, if you're running a post route, if you're running a dig route, a stop route, this is where you want to attack as that faster guy. Because you can always use your speed as your advantage. If you could threaten him to that blind spot, that's going to force him to have to move and get out of there. Because when he's in zone, if he's if he's daring you on a press bail or if he's seven to eight yards off from this top, he is taught do not get beat over the top. If you are in cover three, cover four, he has got that deep third or that deep fourth of the field. So if you can threaten him with speed to this blind spot, you can create a ton of separation. Imagine if he's just running like a straight up comeback route and he comes off the line and he threatens back here to this blind spot with speed. What do you think this DB is going to do? He's probably going to speed turn. And imagine if we threaten the blind spot and run off a comeback, break off an out route, break off a stop route, threaten the blind spot, and then run a post route. That's going to get that DB to widen because his sole purpose is to keep that leverage outside and to prevent the deep ball. So as a faster wide receiver, especially if you're on the outside, you got to get comfortable attacking that blind spot in all kinds of situations. Every single route, you should be attacking that blind spot, except in, of course, a fade route. So let's play this thing again full speed one more time. So fast guys need to attack the blind spot and that blind spot is that area where between the db's back and the sideline attack the blind spot force him to think fade speed turn so we can create some space so let's play this thing again full speed this squirrel route is a great way that you can do that but again you see the kind of separation we can get when we threaten that db to the blind spot okay so now we're going to be looking at this kind of like goal line like stop route curl route hook route whatever you want to think of it from tyreek hill and um why this is such a dang good route because as a fast wide receiver um a lot of times what you see, especially the guys that I work with in the past, you know, that I've worked with in the past that I currently work with, the guys who are really fast, the areas that they struggle in sometimes is the break point. You know, they have so much speed, but they struggle, you know, having that explosive change of direction because they're just so dang fast. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, and they're so twitchy. So a lot of times they struggle maybe getting into a break, selling a route. So they tend to give away their routes with an indicator too early. And that is something that you really, really want to avoid because when you get to that next level, 
everybody's going to be a similar speed, right? Like, like, and when you think about it in a game speed scenario, when you're wearing full pads, a four, four is not that different from a four, five or a four, six It's two tenths of a second. It's not a huge difference. So everybody's fast at that next level. So the details matter, fellas, the details that you showcase and with your route running is what will get you open at that next level. And high school guys can get away with speed, just being bigger than everybody. But the details matter when you get to a certain point, if you want to be that player, you have to think about the details. So let's play this thing full speed from Tyreek Hill. There is no change of pad level on this route. It is solely a hip drop that will get him open on this. And you see how far off this, this DB is bailing, how this DB wants to protect the deep route because they're expecting him to run like a deep cross or like a deep out in the back of the end zone because he's just faster than everybody, right? So if you can keep a good pad level, you can keep a good stride, there's no indication that you're making a break. And that's when it can be really, really fun because it's dangerous. So when he comes up, what a lot of wide receivers will do is they'll get to this point right before the break point and they'll start chopping their feet do you see how his pad level stays in this explosive spot throughout there's not really a change of his pad level at all his head stays at the same spot his body stays at the same spot there's nothing that says hey i'm gonna stop right here at the goal line except the hip drop the hip drop is what you have to get comfortable with you dropping your hips dropping your butt down that's what will slow you down not necessarily you slowing yourself down you could either stop by dropping or you could stop by slowing, right? You slow down, chop your feet, let the DB know exactly when you're making that break. That's a textbook right there. And as a faster guy, you have to get used to that. Let's, let's make it a little bit more simple. Like let's say you're running just like a straight, maybe you're on the outside and you're running like a dig. You have to keep that same pad level, that same stride all the way to that break point and then get out of the route. Because as soon as you start to raise up, as soon as you start to slow down before the break point, that DB knows exactly when you're making a break and he slows down. They're going to match your speed. They're going to match your tempo. They're going to match your stride. As soon as you give it away, they're going to sit right on that thing. So we have to make sure, fellas, on every route, it is the exact same pad level. It is the exact same speed and stride. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Hill getting both defenders off being able to drop with his hips and then finish that play on that catch. So now, last thing I want to talk about here um, that's going to help you faster, guys, is understanding how you can threaten a DB and press coverage with your speed just based off of the angle that you take. So this Jalen Waddle, he's going to be running a slant route right? So what do we always want to make a slant route look like? A fade. And, and if you got man coverage on the outside, you bet your bottom dollar that that DB is thinking about you running deep because guarantee you're probably faster than him. And you you automatically have an advantage because he's playing backwards. So And he's guessing. He doesn't know what route you're going to run. So the more you can make your routes, your releases look like that, you can get a ton of separation, whether it's in one step, whether it's a speed release, or whether it's like out of a diamond release right here. So Waddle does this like kind of hesitation diamond release where he takes three steps to the outside. Now, the angle that he takes off the line is what I want to talk about. Because again, he's got a very wide stem. He's very close to that sideline, right? So as a DB, he's probably expecting an inside breaking route because of how wide this wide receiver is. So if you're in that situation, that's the spacing you have, you really got to make it look like a fade. So how do we do that? So he comes off, he gives this little hesitation move right there, then it's one, two, three. And those three steps that he bursts up on, that's what gets this DB to open up the gate. Because you see how he commits his hips, he commits his shoulders. And obviously, because you're a faster guy, you're going to have some speed to that 45. So if you come off and you could go one, two, three on a 45 degree angle, that looks a lot like a fade. And that is what will get the DB to jump. Now, the mistake that fast guys make, quicker guys, more explosive guys, they'll come off the line, they'll take choppy steps. They're trying to just be quicker than you. And they take choppy steps, trying to sell the fade. That's not going to get this guy to move. What gets him to move because he's watching your hips is going to be your body language. Your body has to commit to the fade. You got to take full strides. You got to be able to change direction while running full stride. That's how it can get very you can get scary good when you're a faster dude and you're confident in your change of direction and you could actually sell. Now, here are the two other mistakes that guys will make. They will go lateral or they will go too vertical. So you see how he's taken off at almost like a 45 degree angle. That forces the DB to make a decision. He's either got to sit to the inside and stick with his guns and I can burn him easily on a fade. So I don't think he will because he's going to jump or what he will do is he'll jump and then you got the slant. So you force him to make a decision by taking that angle. Now, what a lot of guys will do is they'll come off the line and they'll go too vertical. And then as usually as faster guys, usually probably on the smaller side. 
So when you're going up against a guy who you're faster than, and maybe you're trying to threaten him vertical, maybe you're trying to sell a route, but he's probably bigger than you, maybe a little bit stronger, and you go too vertical, he's going to get hands. And then when he gets hands, if especially if I'm small, I'm rerouted. Then another thing guys will do is that they don't understand the concept of what making a route looks like a fade is, and they'll take these same three steps, but they will go too lateral. And nobody runs a fade laterally. They run a fade vertically at a 45 like you're trying to get upfield right now. Nobody runs a fade like that. They don't run away from the guy. So you have to make it look the same. Attack on that 45, attack with speed, attack in full stride, and commit that body to the break. Let's play this thing again full speed. So slower guys, or faster guys, excuse me, faster guys, make sure you understand how to make your releases always, always look like a fade because off the snap of the ball, you are a vertical threat. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We will uh, get back to you as soon as we possibly can. We always appreciate the feedback, and it's always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, if you'd like to come out to one of our off-season camps, we're coming out to Columbus, Ohio, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Los Angeles, California. So check out that very first link in the description below if you want to come get some work in with us. I'll see you guys next time.